looking at right now is Joomla. Joomla is the front end. <clears throat> so we're using Joomla at the front end, and I have a special plug-in for single sign-in, so I can sign in through Joomla. And then I've got Moodle that appears in a wrapper inside. <clears throat> I find it helps to improve the appearance of Moodle. Moodle's a wonderful learning management system, but it's got to be one of the ugliest software programs available. My students cry and moan, they did in the past, about just, just how ugly it was, <laughs> causing you know, brain damage, I guess, or something. So I switched over. This is a nice one. I, I really like this theme from Joomla. It allows me to showcase my students' work on the front page. And um, inside, it's also kind of nice. Now, <clears throat> I modified the Moodle quite a bit, so it doesn't even look like Moodle. I've added Flash navigation inside instead of the usual Moodle navigation. So this is just like a Flash button. And it creates more interest for my students. <clears throat> and I've tidied up the, the uh, menus and so on by adding flash menus instead. I just find that a more interactive environment gets my students more involved in the site. They tend to click through more often. Um, there's a nice function of Moodle that most people don't know about. It's called the Yahoo user interface. And it's like this one. If you create a regular resource in, in Moodle, you can use the Yahoo user interface uh, coding API to create something nicer like this. So you can zoom around in your content. Yeah. Oh, there's, yeah, happy two suck. <coughs> My students, yeah. Um, okay, so I've been using Second Life for language education with my students. How many people are familiar with Second Life? Two, three, four, good. I'm going to give you a very short um, intro video. I'm glad the, the audio is working. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, I think Korea and Second Life have parted ways. I think Korea was offering some kind of special Koreanized support for it. <laughs> and now no more, so. <clears throat> Okay, I'll just stop it there for a second. Um, now, as, I, as you can see, we've been using Second Life for interactions. Um, and here, what we see here is uh, an example of a Sloodle tool. Now, Sloodle is a mashup between Second Life and Moodle. Sloodle is an intermediary software program that allows us to connect Moodle interactions with Second Life interactions, and hence the name Sloodle. It sounds like a celebrity marriage, like <laughs> Brangelina or whatever. Uh, at the top of the screen, you'll see the Sloodle, the Sloodle toolbar, and there's a HUD, a blog HUD. This allows students to blog from Second Life to their Moodle blog. So when they're in Second Life interacting with their friends, or in this case, interacting, KAIST students interacting with students from Kansai Gakuen University in Japan, uh, they're, they're traveling around and asking questions. Uh, they're, they're writing back to their blog to record and reflect on what they're doing in Second Life. Um, they can also take photographs in Second Life and go back to Moodle and add the photo to their blogs. And that's what you saw 
uh, just after this and is an example, sorry, of her photo blog, right? So here's an example of one tool we can use related to Moodle to add um, some academic structure or some learning structure to Second Life. A little later on, there we go. There's our nice teams. Where are we here? Right behind this student here, we see another object at the top with the on button. It's called the web intercom. And this is a way that it's an intercom in Second Life. The students touch the box, and when they're typing in Second Life, their, their chat from Second Life is recorded back to the Moodle chat logs. So this is a good way to make sure your students are on task in Second Life, not goofing around or having fun without your permission. Right? Uh, it's also a great way for students to come back and review what they did in Second Life. Where did communication break down? Um, what did that student say? What did he say to me? <laughs> That's, you know, they can go back and check the uh, actual chat logs in Moodle, as we can see here. There, right, there's an example there. So that's what we did last term. It was a simple cultural exchange. And this term, I decided to take things to the next level. And what we did was created something called Devil Island Mystery. It's a 10 mission interaction in Second Life. It's based on an island in Second Life. It's actually my friend's island. It's called English Village. But we turned it into sort of a Second Life version of the TV drama Lost, where what I did is I put my KAIS students in a virtual airplane and crashed it on the island. <laughs> and stranded them on the island. And I'm going to show you episode two of Devil Island Mystery. All, all, all the episodes are available on the eLearning Project website. You can watch them anytime. But we created a story. I wanted to create a backstory so that when the students went in world, they'd actually have some sort of uh, motivation to do what they were about to do. And um, this video is all recorded in Second Life. And I used uh, Adobe Premiere to edit the results. It looks kind of nice. Okay, so we set up a story and basically they're crashed on the island and we heard about Dr. Mo. Dr. Mo spent 20 years on the island trying to escape and being the, the incredible genius that he was, he finally found a way to build a teleporter and then he found a way to make an energy source to power the teleporter and he teleported out. But when he teleported out, he set the teleporter to self-destruct. He didn't want the energy source to fall into the wrong hands. So my students are stuck on the island with a broken teleporter and the journals from this genius scientist in his lab and they have 10 missions to find their way out so each week they have a new mission they have to go around the island and find the pages from the journal and then the next week they have to go around the island and uh, find pieces of a map and put the map together as a team once they find the map uh, they can find the special plants that Dr. Mo used to cook to cook down and make the crystals they put the crystal in the teleporter and they can go home 
So each part of the mission is hooked together. And fortunately, because we're using Sloodle tools, a lot of the uh, mission elements can actually be tracked uh, into, um, into Moodle. So for example, when my students are in Second Life, in one of the missions, they have to go around and find these plants. And when they touch the plant, the plant identifies their avatar. And it says, OK, you've, uh, you found a plant. And it gives them a leaf. And it gives them 10 points in a scoreboard. So I can see that the students actually interacted. And they get the leaf from that plant. And later on, they need to take that leaf and put it in a cauldron and cook that leaf up to make a, an energy crystal. So all the, all the sections of the course, all the sections of the adventure are hooked together. And they're, in, they're scripted together in some way. But Sloodle allows me to, to um, track what my students are doing. They're doing some really interesting things. For example, um, my students write blogs every week. I have them in the lab for one hour for each mission each week. And so they'll reflect a little on their mission and add a photo. And this, these are used, uh, done using the blog tool. There's a slurl here, which is like a Second Life URL. It identifies where the student was when they wrote the actual blog. And I can give you an example. We have 10 missions. And I'm using, also using the Moodle assignment locking uh, module so that the students have to complete mission one before mission two is unlocked and mission two before mission three is unlocked. So by creating these constraints in the course and calling them missions instead of homework, <laughs> my students actually, they, they dig right into it and they really want to get it done. I'll give you an example of a recent mission. Um, Okay, so that's an example of something my students would see. Um, that's actually, the, that reverb is not part of the original recording. I don't usually sound like my head's in the toilet. <laughs> <coughs> uh, one of my favorite missions is the one we just finished. I'd like to show you this one. Welcome to mission number nine. In this mission, you're going to eat your team on Devil Island. Make a plan for combining the leaves. Combine the leaves and get the crystal. And then share the crystal with your teammates. As always, you'll need to write a blog and add a photo to your blog. Let's get started. You'll remember how Dr. Mole combined the leaves to create an energy crystal. At your team location, you'll find a cauldron just like Dr. Mole's. Touch it to start the fire. Once the fire is started, you and your teammates will use the crystal formula to add the correct leaves. To add a leaf, drag it from your inventory onto the ground in front of the cauldron. Click put it in to put it in the cauldron. Uh oh, it looks like we put in the wrong leaf. What's going to happen next? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some great constraints. Um, my students blew themselves up uh, numerous times, sometimes intentionally, because it's a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> but the, the, in, this, in this case, it was necessary for all of them to communicate with each other clearly, because anyone could have thrown down a leaf at any time, and they had to put them in in a specific order. So communication was really necessary. Up until recently, up until the Sloodle tools, it's been impossible to really create any kind of structure in Second Life for non-programmers. I'm, I'm not a programmer. I'm a hockey player. Uh, I learned about Moodle a few years ago and just kind of learned what I needed to know. But it's nice to know that we have tools like Sloodle that can help us to exploit uh, virtual worlds like Second Life. My students really enjoy being in Second Life. Um, very often, I have to kick them out of the lab at the end of class, um, which is unusual. Usually, for a regular class, as soon as it's exactly 10 minutes to the hour, they are vapor. They're gone. But in this case, many times I have to push them out. So uh, Sloodle.org is the site to go to if you're interested in Sloodle tools. It's free. It's open source. And if you have any questions about the anything, I guess I, we can take it up uh, at dinner. That's it. Thanks for your time. Any questions for Chris? Just a quick one about your interface of the Moodle. Yeah. That's, um, you said, how did you create that? Because that looks really good. Well, one, one secret that you can use for, for this is in Moodle, you can create a course with two topics. And you can actually put all of your content in the second topic. Then you can create buttons in the first topic, pointing to that content. Do you follow me? And then you can go into your settings and hide the second topic. So all the actual content that's active is down below. And the buttons pointing to that content 
are visible, but the, the, the actual links for Moodle are all invisible. I can show you. Uh, the front page here, I hacked it a little bit and just put a, a flash, put a flash button in the label area of the front page. And here, if I turn my settings to, to two instead of one, Let's see, we have one topic. Now if I tw switch it to two, you'll see, it's like revealing a magic trick or something. It's not, there's all the content. So this is all in, in, in the, second, the second topic. And this flash, these flash buttons all point to this content. Got it? Yeah. But how did you get the flash buttons on the side? I made them. And then you put them in blocks. Yeah. Uh, one of the things about Moodle that is great, it has a lot of functionality. One of the things that, about Moodle that's terrible, it's got a lot of functionality. So students tend to get lost in there, and what I wanted to do is to try and simplify it and make it a little more engaging, and that's one way to do it. Um, you could accomplish the same thing with simple JPEG images with links on them if you wanted to without all the flash stuff. But I like it. It's fun. Yeah. The assignment. That's right. Yeah, so the, the fun part about it is all of the media, like the, the videos I showed you, the episodes plus the mission media, we use that for learning in the classroom, but the students actually get to go into Second Life and interact with that, right? So they become connected with that actual media. And in the future, I can see using Second Life as sort of a, a farm for creating learning media that we can use even outside of Second Life itself, right? It's all open source. Whatever you record, whatever you gather from Second Life belongs to you. Whatever you see through the viewport is yours. Yeah, my students like it. Yeah. They actually refer to some of the characters, like Dr. Mo, the lead character, causes them some trouble because he blows up the teleporter, and then he destroys this map that had the locations of these plants on it. My students were so upset. It's like, stupid Dr. Mo. He probably doesn't even have a doctorate. Why isn't he helping us? <laughs> right? They're really connecting with this guy. So it's like, I'm going to kick his butt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm also using VoiceThread for, yeah, that's right, I'm using VoiceThread because we're doing an uh, actual exchange between Keist and Kansai Gakuen University. And so what we decided to do is have synchronous in-world action in Second Life and then asynchronous. So my students and his, my friend's students, Stephen Moynester at Kansai Gakuen University, are also having students post video and images from Second Life. VoiceThread's nice, nice because you can add uh, with, if you have a, a camera, you can add video uh, spontaneously to the slides, and you can have uh, comments over time between students. And you, you can basically give all the whole control, editing control to the students themselves. So we have synchronous communication in Second Life, and then afterward the students can come back, add some photos, and continue their conversation. Yeah. And it's free, which is... This one is... Yeah, voice fair is free. It's free. Yeah. Well, my students were only using one voice thread for a whole team, so I have a I use a premium account because I wanted to get under the hood and try it out a little bit more. But uh, in general, it's free. Uh, it's free. Uh, membership in Second Life is free, and Moodle is free. We're all free. Next term, I'll be moving from Second Life to Open Simulator, which is a completely open source platform for the same thing. Yeah. Same kind of interactivity. Yes, so little will work fine. How long did it take you to set all this up? A whole summer, about 400 hours. But um, I'm planning to bundle this together, uh, create a, a no, no, I, well, maybe later. But the whole idea is that educators aren't using a lot of this technology because the curve for creating the content is so high to begin with. So what I want to do is create an open source repository. So I'm going to bundle together the open simulator platform in OpenSim, we can actually zip up all the content, the terrain, the objects, the scripted stuff, even the avatars, the people. I can zip it up and give it to another person who's running OpenSim. Or I could put the whole thing together with Sloodle and Moodle. So you'd have a course, you'd have the, the tie-in with Sloodle, you'd have all the content in, in Open Simulator. You just have to configure it and run it. So that's that. Thanks.